Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Today I want to talk about if I could design the perfect first knife for anyone. Because let's be honest, none of us stop at one. <laughs> none of us. Even, even if you aren't really a collector, even if you're someone who just is utility-based, just uses your knives, we all end up with more than one knife. Um, it just happens, okay? We, we all do it. Don't try to deny it. So, I want to design, though, I, I want to talk a little bit about what I think would be the best features to having a knife that's someone's first knife. And here's kind of what I want to, want to address. One, it's got to be functional. It's got to be a good EDC tool because, at least for me, what really gets me hooked in the EDC community uh, is utility. I like being able to use my knife. I like knives that perform. So we want utility. The next thing, we want it to look good. We want it to be something that feels awesome because we all love that. We all love knives that are just awesome. Um, and I want it to be something that's universal or if not universal that's likely to be liked by a large majority of people so let's go ahead and just jump right into that shall we all right so the first thing i considered and geez i'm not sure how i'm going to do this <laughs> i have never actually drawn under a camera before so first thing i wanted was a blade that's exactly three inches let's move this up why? Well, because I feel like, yeah, that's not a good spot for that. I feel like that's a good uh, EDC size and it's pretty legal for most people. Um, a lot of places that have blade length restrictions, I know there's areas that have like, you know, it can't be over two inches, blah, 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 whatever, but, you know, a lot of places it seems like three inches is the, the mark. So, three inch blade. Also, this knife is not going to be an automatic because, you know, I don't feel like automatics are super friendly to beginners and they're also illegal a lot of places and we want this knife to be fairly legal. So let's think about our blade shape and I'm going for a drop point. And why a drop point? Well, because I feel like, again, bear with me. I feel like a drop point blade is very useful and also very easy to sharpen. Now I did kind of debate whether I wanted a whoops, drop point or a worn cliff because worn cliffs are very easy to sharpen since so it's just a straight line, but I actually decided to go with a drop point because I feel like it gives just better overall utility for most people. Um, not saying that Warncliffs don't, because Warncliffs do give a lot of good utility. But I feel like drop points are just more useful for more people. Okay, so here's our, our general shape. And here's the kind of drop point I wanted. I wanted a big belly drop point. Why? Well, because, you know, you get your flat and you get lots of belly. And I, I want the point to be fairly pointy. You'll see that this one, that this is not very pointy at all, but I want the grind to come down to a good distal taper, especially here at the point to give you good geometry there. So you can do your pokey stuff, opening blister packs and all that. Um, let's go with uh, the, the sharpening choil. I actually want like a SOCOM Elite style, like one of these, not so much a choil as just a, the edge stops here. So, you know, the plunge grind will come down to like, like, like here. Yeah, actually, in fact, we'll draw that in here in just a second. So that's how I want our blade shape. I want there to be lots of life to be able to sharpen out of that. Okay, so let's just go into the handle. Um, start there. I do kind of like handles that round a little bit. Okay, and bring the blade back like that. Hmm, no, 
that's too much. It's too much. That'll just get caught in your cuts. So we're actually going to bring the edge back a little bit. Why am I going with a sharpening choil over a finger choil? Well, I'm kind of going for maximum edge here on this knife that's, you know, a three inch blade. I want as much edge as we can possibly get while still having a good choil. Looks a little bit gross right now, but that's how it's gonna be. Um, and because I feel like I feel like finger choils are something you kind of grow into in the knife community uh, or into the knife hobby. Like right here, I think this is good because we're going to make a, a safe knife for someone. I want the person who's using this knife, it's going to be their first knife, I want to feel safe. So let's go ahead and draw the back profile of the handle. Again, I want this handle to be, we'll go four inches. So we'll start there. And you know what, actually, do I want to go four and a quarter? Yeah, we're going to go four and a quarter on the uh, handle length. Mm, nah, that blade to handle ratio is off. We'll, we'll, we'll do a solid four inches. That should give the blade enough room to fold up into itself and give plenty of ergonomic freedom while maintaining a fairly decent uh, Ugh, pushing my camera. <laughs> a fairly decent blade to handle ratio. Okay, so let's go back along here. Let's curve down a little. Okay, we're going to go a little bit past my four inch mark. That's okay. All right, now this is important to me. I made this area back here flat. Why? Because if someone has bigger hands, their pinky can wrap around, around this flat area instead of it curving in and locking you back there. And we're talking about first knives. If this is a first knife for like a kid, I want you know them to be able to grow into it. So yeah. And right now this looks like a bushcraft hunting fixed blade type knife. Um. Yeah, as you notice, no flipper tab. I want this to be a thumb stud knife. Do I want the thumb studs to be external blade stops? Hmm. You know what? I think I do actually. So we're gonna have this little area here come out like that. Okay, and then we're gonna have our thumb studs. Yeah, we want the studs. Okay, there we go. You know what, I'm not liking this slope back here. I'm really not, in fact, I'm trying to make these ergos as neutral as possible. You'll notice that right there. I think I like that better. There is a little bit of a, a taper there, but not too much. I don't like this area here either. I feel like you'd be too far away from the edge. I was talking, you know, I do want this knife to feel, to feel safe, but also, being too far away from the edge leads to issues. So, I think we're gonna do like that. Kind of bug out looking, isn't it? <laughs> that was not on purpose, I promise. But you know what? I, I guess there's a reason the bug out is such a such popular design. I'm not sure if you guys can see this real good, hopefully, but you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and go over it in a black pen.
So, now let's go ahead and just fill in our hardware. Um, I kind of think I'm liking how this is turning out. Okay, yeah. So I want the blade to be robust so that no matter what type of person this is, whether they're kind of a office EDC or an outdoors type guy, the, the, the blade will be um, good. You know, you don't want someone breaking their knife. So that's why I have kind of like this where there, there's not like a very acute tip. It's still pretty strong. However, I do want the grind to be thin. So this is going to be a kind of a full flat grind. And um, we'll do an almost full flat grind. So the grind will be kind of like that. Again, there's our edge termination. Okay, so, yeah. Let's start working on some of this hardware. We have our pivot here. Obviously, we want this to be a T8. In fact, I'm gonna make all the hardware on this knife T8. And speaking of hardware, I don't want there to be too much of it. So we're going to put, yeah, right here. We're gonna have a standoff. And uh, that kind of looks like a T6 screw. It's, a, it's gonna be a T8. <laughs> you know what, let's, Let's start that again. <sighs> yeah, big screws, nice big hardware. So, what kind of knife is this? I'm thinking this will be a liner lock. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, access to the liner is crap. What I wanna do is have inset liners and then have this area here kind of like milled out on the inside. Uh, I've got a few knives like that, and the, the axis to the liner's not too bad. Maybe we'll make... Nah, liner lock. And I want this knife to be kind of in the... Um, well, we'll talk more about price when we talk about materials. Ah, my marker's smudging. Yikes. And then we'll want a standoff right... Right here. Actually, we're going to have a backspacer, so those are both going to be in the backspacer. Okay, nice. Nice, nice, nice. And the backspacer, I want to have a uh, internal uh, lanyard hole, a lanyard hole milled into the backspacer, so, because, you know, some people like lanyards. So here's the other thing that I want. This is going to be the important part. So. Should move this. Maybe I should put this guy higher. Eh, maybe not. We're going to add right here. That right there, in case you can't tell, is a little steel plate for a reversible clip. Kind of like what we have here on this Dam Designs Cerberus. I do want this clip to be reversible. That's uh, that's very important to me. Okay, nice, 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 nice. So there's the hardware. Should we color this beast? I kind of think we should, because I want to say, I said, I want this knife to be a good looking knife. So let's go ahead, we'll color him. And uh, well, first we'll kind of darken up what we just did. Let's do it.
Okay, there we go. There we go. Maybe fixed a few issues. <laughs> this this drawing's not going to look amazing, but that's okay. It doesn't have to. Okay, so after all, this is just just me sitting at my desk, bored one night, doing a real quick freehand sketch of a knife that doesn't even exist and probably never will. Okay, so let's grab my coloring utensils. So, I'll let you guys guess. What color is this? this is the G10 on this knife going to be? If you guess blue, then obviously you've been watching this channel for a while because yes, it's going to be blue. <laughs> but I don't I, I don't want it to be just blue. I want to give this I want to give it some character. So I want the handles to be contoured. So you know we can add like a, a little chamfer around here. In fact, actually since we're having this now, nah, I was gonna say maybe we could have the, the liner shadow box so you know the liners come a little bit proud of the, the scales, but I'm not sure I won't do that actually. Um Do I want to do these? You know what I like? I like um I've got a knife right here with this material actually. Yeah. I really love carbon fiber, this carbon fiber G10 mix. This is the best tech ascot. We want to do that. You know what? No, 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 because that, that material I know is a little bit, can sometimes be a little bit pricey. So I want to keep the price on this knife fairly low. Um, let's go with. Hmm. All right, now I'm using this purple to go around the edges, to kind of show that chamfered look. Okay, now we've got that done, let's go ahead and... How do I want to color this guy? Jeez. <laughs> I didn't think this part would be so hard. I want him to look unique. You know what? I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a page out of Best Tech's book. We're gonna go with the bolstered. We're gonna go with the bolster looks. So we're gonna have a black faux bolster and then. Yeah, okay, that's a good idea.
there we go. And actually, I thought of something just now. I should put a pivot color on there because I love pivot colors. I would want a, an anodized blue aluminum pivot color there. The blade, what do I want to do with the blade? I, okay, you know what? Actually, I think I know what I want to do with the blade. Sharpen my pencils later. I want a DLC flat with a stone wash on the grind. So we're just gonna use this pen. No, 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 we're not. No, we're not. We're gonna use my marker. And you know, something uh, else I think would be interesting is actually have this black bolster have like a, um, like almost like a, like a diamond pattern milling in there for, for grip. And then have back here, this blue stuff, be like a polished G10. I wonder how that would work out. I don't think I've ever had a knife that really had that. I wonder if having the, the grip up here would be enough to give it that. Because honestly, this knife does not have very many ergonomic lines to like lock you in, per se. They're more like, the ergonomic lines on this knife are more designed to be neutral and comfortable to a, you know, a, a wide range of people. Okay, so there we go, we've got DLC up there. And then we'll just do like a very light, like this here for the uh, the stone washing. But yeah. So why thumb studs, not a flipper? I'm not sure if I already mentioned that, but right now I'm just kind of rambling. I think thumb studs are more I think people would be more comfortable with thumb studs on a new knife than with a flipper. Honestly, uh, should I draw an edge on here? Nah, I'm not gonna go. Yeah, you know what? I'll go back and draw an edge here in a second. But yeah, I wanted a stone wash because I think stone washes are just better all around. They hide scratches and stuff, and if you do it right, a stone wash can look absolutely amazing. So there we'll have our stone wash blade. Nah, I'm not gonna draw an edge on here. So there's that. Materials. So handle scale, obviously. G10, blade steel. You guys are going to wonder why I chose this. I'll tell you here in a minute. VG10. VG10 is not one of my favorite steels at all. In fact, it doesn't even make my top 10 list. But how much do I want this knife to cost? I want this to be about 50 to $55. And I think VG10 is a great steel in that range. And I chose VG10 because I want the stainless qualities the ease of sharpening and decent edge retention that this brings. And at this budget, I think that'd be really, really nice. Um, we want it to be a liner lock, obviously steel liner lock. Um, how fat do I want the blade stock? Hmm, I don't know. I think I want the blade stock to be 120 thousandths. It blade stock. 120 thousandths. Handle thickness. So I want to be contoured. So that's going to change the thickness a little. Um. Let's go with between 0.5 and 0.7 of an inch thick. And I know that that's a little bit chubby, but I want this knife to be hand filling, so I think it I think it fits. 
uh, grind thickness. So behind the edge thickness. I have no idea what I just spelled there. F T H I K. It's weird. I can't spell, guys. That's okay. Uh, let's go with. Yeah, I want this to be a performer. I want this to be 15 to 17 thousandths. Nice. Nice. Okay, pocket clip. I should probably design a pocket clip. Here's what I want the pocket clip to look like. So from the front, you know, I'm actually going to model this after a CRKT clip that I've seen quite a bit. I want the clip to be fairly fat. And then I want to... be a little bit wider at the top than it is at the bottom. I want to have this big hole in it for the screws, and of course this clip is reversible. I have a nice little upturn. Let's draw this from like a side profile. So if we have the side of the knife here, say this is the scale of the knife, the clip is going to come, let's see here, yeah. No, that's, that's too thin, that is too thin. There's not enough room under that clip, so let's come up. Yeah, that's enough room. Not too tall, so that's gonna be an ergonomic problem. Just give them a little bit of a th little bit of thickness. Ugh. Wow, this looks <laughs> looks weird. But I, I bet, hopefully that kind of you know shows what the clip looks like. If this is the you know if this is the knife scale, that's how the clip is. Flat screws, and of course I want the clip recess. You guys know how I am. Uh, T8. Hardware. Now we need to give it a name. You know what? I'm going to sign my work real quick. That's my signature on all my artwork. <laughs> um, what should I call this? You know, the name that just came to mind right now is the Poseidon. I don't know where that came from. It just popped in my head. Um, do I like that? The Poseidon? What do I want the pivots to be? You know what? I want the pivots to be bearings. Just get people hooked on good action. Yeah, we're going to call this the Poseidon. Did I spell that right? I don't think I did. No. I, in fact, I know I didn't. Why did I put an I there? S. I think it's E? I? The Poseidon? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. All right. Hmm. I think that's about it. I think we're done here. Um. Hmm. Now I guess the only question is, uh, who would I get to manufacture it? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm pretty happy with this, actually. Um, I've been thinking about this a little bit uh, today, you know, when I came up for the idea of this video, but uh, the knife actually came out. Uh, I, I did some things that I was not thinking about, namely the uh, external stop pin. Huh. Yeah. The thumb stud slash stop pin. Anyways. That's it. This is my design for a first knife for someone who's just getting into knives. Um, I want, you know, I think that this would be a great knife for outdoor type activities as well as regular EDC stuff. In fact, let's double check and make sure my blade is actually exactly three inches like I wanted it. 
you know what? We're technically even a little bit under three inches. Nice, nice, so yeah, legal for a lot of people. Reversible clip, it is a liner lock. Why did I decide to go with a liner lock instead of something a little more ambidextrous? I figured a liner lock is kind of the easiest for people to figure out. So yeah, um, maybe I should have made a little more of a cutout there, but to access that lock, but you know what? Don't think so. Uh, I wanna add a note real quick. Lanyard in back spacer. Now obviously this is not a full on design. You know, I haven't made a 3D model or, or anything, but uh, yeah, yeah. I like it, I like it. Anyways, that's all for today, folks. I'm losing my light, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the hay. Just wanna scribble this out before, you know, just kinda end the day. And uh, yeah, there we go. Um, like, comment, subscribe. I've been kidding and stuff, and I'll uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.